That's a great segue to talk about our next session, a fireside chat between Partha Sinha, President and Chief Brand Officer, BCCL Times of India, and Mr. Sudhan Shuwats, Managing Director Designate, Pidilite Industries. Let's prepare for an insightful session as they will be speaking about the influence of marketing in the boardroom. I've got a set of 10 provocations. So we will put up each provocation over there and after that we'll, we'll discuss, yeah? Is that fine? Perfect. Oh, this is a cartoon one of the uh, uh, you know, kids in our office picked up. It says, guys, let's, let's do some market research to find out what marketers can do to make marketing relevant to our board members. You know, I think we'd need a market research. So this is, this is actually how we started the presentation in Cannes. This is a data from our very own Economic Times. You know, if you see over the years, number of marketing stories have come down dramatically. You know? Now, Economic Times is a business paper, right? It's not a finance paper or a marketing paper or any such paper. It is a business paper. So, you can clearly see what is the role of marketing increasingly in the you know, most definitive business paper of the country. I'm sure it will be the same with business channels. I mean, we don't have that uh, data. Um, uh, or, you know, it will be the same with a business website. So this is the truth. And so our starting point was, is kind of marketing losing relevance in the overall scheme of business. You know, it's good, fancy thing to say that we have built brand salience and stuff like that. Does it really matter? So our first provocation, Sudhanshu. These, by the way, all these data are from different studies. So you don't have to question the data because we have worked hard to find out. They are from different studies. Okay, first one says 40% of the top 50 companies in India in terms of market capitalization do not have a marketing representation in their boards. Okay, we actually did this calculation. We took out the you know, valuation and top 50 company, 40% of the top 50 company, there is no scene of marketing in the boardroom. First question, therefore, so large businesses are getting built without marketing in the, bed, in the, in the boardroom. So do shareholders see value in marketing? <laughs> no, no, first of all, thank you so much, uh, Partha, for inviting me. And uh, pardon me, once in a while I use the term Pancho because I call him more that than Partha. We go 35 years back, we went to the same school as Partha talked about. We also learned some of those things together. And Partha, one of the key things about data is so data is not lying, but what you are reinterpreting in the data is up to you. So let me first comment on the first slide you showed on Economic Times. And you showed a very sharp decline in brand, um, and, and, you know, brand, marketing, and, marketing brand and marketing stories. But uh, if you allow me on a lighter note and the liberty is that Economic Times has tilted more towards politics, and maybe politics is a bit more interesting. <laughs> if all of you remember, there are now two, two, two full pages of politics, and you dedicate those two pages to that, and then you say brand and marketing is gone. But that's on a lighter note. I think the point which this you goes made on to is say CEOs, <laughs> all CEOs read the Economic Times from cover to cover. So in case you are targeting CEOs, you know what paper. Yeah, but I think, uh, to be honest with you, when, uh, you know, Pachu told me that we have, we'll be talking about it, so first of all, I said absolutely, because it's a pleasure to be with him and to be with friends and to be with many friends here. So thank you once again, and it's indeed my pleasure to be with you and to share my thoughts, you know, whatever little I have sort of uh, understood. But when first the topic came to me and some of the thoughts were said that it'll be very provocative, I must tell you, I was a bit fearful. But what this one, one and a half hour sitting in the room and Ed's and, and Rika's and, and you know, Bepro's presentation has done is you've equipped me with more data than I thought I had <laughs> to answer all the questions. So thank you very much, I think, as you spoke about it. So I think first question on uh, do shareholders see value in marketing? My answer is an absolute yes, because, you know, this one, um, Pancho, I'll be very clear, it's a clear yes, because, and, and you saw it in multiple of those earlier videos, and I'll keep referring to them as well. So the point is, first of all, all boardrooms, you are in the business of business. And we know when you build brands, 
you basically get better margins. When you get better margins, you get better profit. And all business is about profit. Now, again, as one of the videos was saying, and you will keep sort of hearing a little bit of this from me, is so brand is not, or building brands is not only creative, although creative has a very, very large role to play, in my opinion. But it starts with, as one of those professors talked about, uh, he used the first term on diagnosis. I call that insight. I would use the word insight. Insight, strategy, and then brand building. So therefore, segmentation is critical. And segmentation will remain critical even in the future. Segmentation is critical to large markets. Segmentation is critical. So therefore, if, if you ask me, one of the most important tenants is segment, segment, segment. Now, ag again, I'll be honest with you, Pancho, that it may or may not apply to all industries. So there could be some deep tech industries. There could be some heavy industries, uh, some uh, specialized equipment, or some other industries. So, but in general, it will apply to a vast majority, in my opinion. And I think to the comment which is there on the data on 40% of top 50 companies in India, uh, don't in market capitalization terms, as in these are the top 50 market cap companies. But my request is, weight this data by the revenue and by their market cap, and also by the number of directors who are marketeers in that, and you will see a very different figure <laughs> so on that note. But my point is that it's all about being able to bring the relevance to the place, keeping that fact of the matter is, if you specifically think long-term, uh, big brands we, we, we saw here are built with culture. I've had the privilege of actually working with, and, and with organizations and with brands which have actually played out humanity and humor, as Ed was talking about. So I think whether you talk of Surf Excel and some of my, I don't know, believer colleagues are here or not, but our long journey on Daga Chihen actually comes very, very close to it. Uh, but also uh, colors, I think, which were, you know, so when it started off in terms of doing things which are very different and so on and so forth. And now finally, Fevicol, which actually blends uh, culture and humor quite a lot. It's basically, uh, and you know, and Fevicol, uh, again, as you were seeing in many of these places, you don't have to advertise because a lot of people talk about Fevicol. Fortunately, politicians are very fond of talking about Fevicol, and you are very fond of covering politics, so I think that helps. So I think the point is, and, and you know, but a small anecdote, let me tell you. I think, you know, when uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, once went to Japan, and you know, Shinzo Abe uh, was his very good friend, as you know. Uh, Modi has multiple friends, but I think that's a great Always. A country like India. So I think, so you know, and he talked about something in his speech, and, and he said, our bond is like Fevicol. And you know, most of the Japanese which started sort of, you know, Googling is what is Fevicol? What is the word he's using? And so on and so forth. So I think that's the power of building brands which are culturally context, uh, which have the culture context, which actually get embedded into the culture of a country or a company or a or sort of culture of a country or a community and so on and so forth. And all big brands do that. Today, it, the, the, today, the lingo which you use, or Gen Z is the way they put it, or Gen A nowadays, I'm told, which even sort of, you know, would be different. And you need to understand that. But as long as it's relatable, as long as it's human, and on top of it, if you add humor to it, uh, then, as they say, it's Sone Pe Suhaga. So I think, therefore, the ro this answer is an unequivocal yes. It will remain for a vast majority of companies. There are a set of companies where it will be slightly less relevant. But even those companies being br build brands. So Caterpillar is a brand, Pancho. I'm saying the point is they yeah. may not segment as sharply as many of the other soaps guys have to do and so on and so forth. But you have to build brands at all, at all times. There's no question in my mind. And just to answer your question why we cover so much of politics, you know, everybody says that humor is very important in everything. <laughs> <laughs> On that one, by the way, for advertisers, today we talked about humanity and humor, but long back, this goes about 20, 25 years back, Pancho, when I was in one of these such sessions and there was some distilling of multiple kind of things which had been done. I don't know if it was Ad Asia or somewhere, where they talked about that four things always sell. Always. Product, if you have, so therefore, product, humor, and we talked about humor today, religion, and sex. So four things always, so I'm saying they, they are short, may not be short, that order. But may not be that order. So I'm not talking about order here, but I'm saying that's the piece, and we today talked about humanity and humor here. Okay, so that's, that's settled. 
shareholders do see value in marketing, but the marketeers are not making into the boardroom, that's another question, we'll come back to it. Uh, second provocation. Today, less than 3% of public or private companies have a CEO serving on their board. That was the question I was coming to. So, there is, there is no CMO, which is, I mean, Caterpillar could be a brand, but the marketing department guy will not, is not making into the boardroom in a hurry. The CFO is making into the boardroom in a hurry. So the question, therefore, is, is brand still central to building business, or how does management, therefore, take brand decision? You know, in a boardroom, there would be no CMO. I'm not saying that that doesn't mean market, no marketing voice, but there is no designated marketing representation in the board. So how are they taking brand decision or other decisions at all built on brands? So this, this I think is a fair point that the representation of CMOs in many of the boards is less. That is correct. That I, I would not, this one I would not uh, argue against. Um, but once again, I think one point I would do, I, I would once again talk about that first, I think it's a full spectrum, Pancho. I think, you know, there will be, a, there are boards like ours where there are a lot of people with marketing background and, are, and even if they don't come from marketing background, they're marketers at heart. So I think therefore, and there are others like that. So there will be a lot of uh, boards which are like this. Uh, but there are others where there is, and, and, and here the statistics is the statistics. So I think the point is, in my opinion, what happens is that in order to take effective decisions, do you want the CMO to be on the board is question one. Or do, you, or do you bring some of these conversations to the board from management, which CMOs are there in all management, and, and into the board, and also some external factors? So I think, again, and this is about, and, and this, and you know, as you were hearing some of the Khan's Lions things and all that, so it's about being these, uh, you know, guys like me in, in, in suits and all that. So <laughs> basically being, you know, sort of saying that you've got to be very efficient on time, you've got to do sort, and you know, most of these uh, boards and board meetings tend to be very tight. Everybody has a lot of pressure on time. And with, world over, I think with a bunch of, executive directors and independent directors, independent directors are even more, uh, uh, you know, hard pressed on time, if I could use the word. I think, you know, and therefore, and they have certain set of things which they are responsible for, which is their fiduciary or governance duties. And unfortunately, market, unfortunately or unfortunately, brands and advertising doesn't fall in that area. There are many other things they've got to focus on. So therefore, if you look at the boardroom and then, and therefore effective utilization of time in the boardroom, I think that is a very strong headwind against uh, quality marketing conversations in the boardroom. And I think that, if I, that comes with the territory. It's a bit of a, like, it's the a, it's a, it's a nature of the beast, so to say. And that perhaps works somewhat against it, point number one. Point number two, I think, which is what I, th I think if uh, I, when Rika was talking and one of those professors was talking, so I think, it is also upon us, many of us in the room as marketeers, to sort of bring out both the hard and soft aspect of it and also uh, rightly play the harder elements, whether it is pricing, which we spoke about in the earlier sessions, segmentation, which I'm a very, very big fan of, insights and so on and so forth, and leading into strategy. As we do that, we prepare ourselves better for those roles, I think. Somewhere what happens is, uh, you know, the creative part of it is, is very exciting, extremely energizing. As you were saying, we are following through of those sessions. Uh, and therefore, sometimes you get carried away by this. So I think as marketeers, it's a, getting that right balance is very important in my opinion. And as you groom yourself, then you perhaps manage this a little bit better. But I think, are, is brand still central to building businesses? The answer is yes. Should you, and are, are are boards cognizant of that? The answer is yes. I think in most cases, if not all cases. Uh, but are, does it have direct representation? And is the conversation, do people have time for those conversations in those places? The answer is perhaps no. And that's why you find that direct representation of CMOs is a bit less, and you therefore come into it when you need to talk about it, and so on and so forth. So you're saying that in the current form, it's pretty much like a commercial break, if at all. 
Otherwise, if, we, if, if marketing has to make that inroad into the boardroom, they need to make the business case a little stronger. Yes, yes. Okay, that's a, that's a valid point. Provocation three. Over only 10% of Fortune 250 CEOs have marketing experience. This is global. This is global. Only 10% only out of 250, you know. There would be more people with supply chain experience. I'm finance, of course. There would be more people with supply chain experience. There would be more people with manufacturing experience. HR utna suna nahi mene, but ho bhi sakta hai. But 10% or only 10% have marketing experience at all. So question therefore is, is marketing experience overrated? <laughs> no, no, I think again, see this one is, the answer to this one is, well, the yes, first one, yes, and second one, I perhaps agreed with you, and this one, it's maybe. So I think the, I'm using the word maybe in one word, one short word. So the point is that it's very contextual. I think the point is, and therefore, first of all, this data which you're showing is global. I think if the same data you were to pick out for India, I think the statistic would be a bit different. I don't have the number, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be different for a country like India. Because when we, and, and we you know, signed off in the last session saying that India is a country of, um, it's, it's, it's a country which is a continent, not a country, and therefore understanding the nuances in a country like India, understanding its culture and so on and so forth makes it uh, different. And therefore, you will in India see a lot more people, in my opinion, running large organizations who come, who had basic grounding in marketing or sales and marketing. So, but the trend is different globally, that is correct. I think, and second thing is also with the sectors which are growing now. So if you look at technology as a sector, so if your top companies currently are more technology companies and so on and so forth and, and, and otherwise as well, or finance companies, although you have Ajay Banga, who is like sort of, so that's what the point is, but those are, so the question is that what the point I'm making is that this is again correct, but my view is it's very contextual and that's the answer is maybe, depending on which category you're looking at, which industry you're looking at, which country you're looking at, what slice of history you're looking at, frankly, Pancho. So I think therefore, in, in this particular way, as of now, 14, 14 50, 250, 10% CEOs, that's correct. But, uh, but I think marketing is a very essential piece. Marketing, in my opinion, is, is important to build businesses and build brands and to build these things for, for longer period and posterity. As we know, uh, brands usually outlive generations and so on and so forth. Good brands, definitely. So I think, therefore, is marketing important? The answer is unequivocal, yes, once more. And therefore, is that experience important? In my opinion, absolutely yes. Um, but as I said, the, you know, depending on this, to answer this question, the answer will be maybe. I'm thinking okay. depending on where you're okay. taking the cut from. Uh, uh, maybe I would like to, picking up your maybe, maybe I would like to rephrase this question. Do you think, therefore, that marketing people need to redefine the marketing experience bit, that what they should pick up? You know, like today, marketing people build themselves in a particular way. And it may not necessarily be relevant to get into the board of Apple or Google or whatever, you know. Do you think they need to build slightly different kind of skill sets now to be eligible to get into that room? That's a great point. I think, uh, I would say not only marketeers. I think one of the challenges of the new world is that all of us have to continuously uh, you know, learn and I would say unlearn, relearn and, 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 and you know, maybe uh, learn something new or learn. And I think that is becoming uh, increasingly with, with every passing decade and year, I think that's becoming more and more important. So I think like for anyone else... Why should we learn? Been, the LLM huh? is supposed to learn. <laughs> no, no, I think the point is LLM will also learn, but I think we need to learn because, and you know, as you were seeing in that AI piece again, as uh, some of the early speakers spoke about, I think you've got to have a... I personally, I continue to believe that there will always be a balance between humans and, and technology and AI. And irrespective of a lot of fears and all that, I don't think... AI or something will take over or more of that. So I think it's, and especially in the field of marketing and creativity, I think there is room, I think, it, it, so therefore that will be the piece which is there. So therefore, and I think here, the, and I think marketers have a little bit more onus to learn, Pancho, to your question, maybe compared to a finance professional, if I could. Or a tech order, professional. Or a tech or professional, but yeah, even finance a little bit of tech, because the thing is that the 
context is changing faster. The so therefore, the, the shelf life of, of uh, cultural uh, you know, errors, if I was to call them, is reducing. So therefore, you know, therefore there is a new culture which is getting created uh, faster than what had happened you know, earlier. So therefore, they're because of everything, where technology has a role to play, globalization has a role to play, communication has a role to play, and all that stuff. So that's the- Great, that's the next provocation. I don't remember what it is, but, oh, the matrices that matter the most to the CEOs are revenue, sales, profitability, while those that matter to the CMO are brand equity, awareness, consideration, etc. Are CMOs aligned to the CEO's vision, or are they happy measuring different things? So this one, I, uh, I don't, again, agree with this, because I'll tell you why. While these matrices look different, but they are not, and they are, yes, technically they are, they are different, very different, but these are lead indicators of the revenue, sales, and profitability which you are driving. Because if you, have to drive, if you have to drive revenue, if you have to drive profitability, you've got to build brands that we just again spoke about and, and the pricing power and so on and so forth. So for that, you need to do some of these initial things of you know, equity, awareness, and cons So the point is that these are the lead indicators for something which we'll be following. And if you have a longer term horizon, which all good companies need to have, all good leaders need to have, I think in my opinion, uh, these are not very different. And I think it's, a, it's just about finding that sync. So it's like, it's one set of indicators which leads to the next set of indicators. And if you're able to uh, convince your CEOs and talk to your CEOs in a more meaningful way, I think that's not a problem at all in my opinion. Okay, number five, 60% of the CEOs are quick to compromise long-term brand health for short-term measures like ROI. As CEO, what's your point of view when the D Street evaluates you quarterly, as they say, QSQT, quarter se quarter tak. Uh, so, uh, are you really interested in long term, or what is the meaning of long term, honestly? Yeah, no, no, no. So, let me be absolutely candid. I personally feel the word I will use here is balance. So, I think that's a, if I was to use a single word, it's about balance. Uh, I, I, I very firmly believe. Uh, that good companies cannot get carried away by uh, short term, quarter to quarter. Can you entirely ignore a quarter? The answer is no. So I'm saying, as you said, honestly, I'm saying that's why you need that balance. But I think you've got to motor in a way, so you know, you've got to, you're motoring in that direction, you know your, let's say, true north. What you need to keep, keep recalibrating is the speed, you know? Or, as you know, I'm a runner. So again, the point is, it's like about pacing your 42K and all that. So the, so the game, so the life is a, and life and business is marathon. It's not a sprint. But the question is, how do you pace each of these as you go forward, each of your kilometers, and how are you running? So in, a, in an analogy sense, you've got to find that balance. Longer term is important. I think uh, in today's day and age, uh, basically, sometimes we feel it is not, but I think it is important. And, and we've seen that for many companies, if you look at it currently. So I think it's not that, you know, some companies become a darling of the bosses or darling of or cultural darlings and then sort of just disappear if they've not had the proper long-term uh, horizon. And the ones which stay in the game are the ones which have had that horizon. And I think that's the piece. And I think, uh, you know, that's, that's how you've got to do it. So you've got to balance it out and, and, and find, the, find the right balance in this case. This is, this is music to many marketeers' ears. But the good thing there is, if the CEOs are trained in Unilever, your life is sorted. You know, <laughs> that's, that's the fact. You know, most CEOs in India are trained in Unilever. True, right? Because there's a, there's a junior from our uh, institute who has written the book. Yes. You know, Sudhir. Yeah, yeah. Sudhir Sitapati has written a book saying the CEO, CEO factory, right? CEO factory. The CEO factory. So, India is in good hands because <laughs> most people will be trained by... <laughs> no, no, long term is important. There's no doubt about that. CEOs often view marketing as a line item expense to be managed efficiently versus being managed effectively. My favorite pet peeve, that how do you prevent effectiveness from becoming a martyr at the altar of efficiency. Because if you are measuring efficiency, you know, this is my pet peeve forever, that we are measuring how many views, how many, this thing, what happened, you know, immediately versus effective, what happened to my business result? That I did stuff and did it, did it change my share price? 
Did it change things which matter at the end of the day? So, you know, in that quest of measuring everything here and now, are we becoming more efficiency driven than effectiveness driven? Um, no, I think again, it's a very interesting provocation. Uh, having said that, I think my view is that you got to basically, effectiveness will always win over efficiency, always. But efficiency will get talked about more. So I think that's the, so that is the conundrum here. So I think if you look at the presentations which, we, which, which happened just before our, you know, both the, you know, uh, both, uh, both the presentations, if most of your case studies which were talked about and most of the interesting ones are all very effective. And they are not driving, so efficiency is, it's not, you're not driving efficiency, you're driving effectiveness. You're driving, you want to be, you know, um, you 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 got to you you got to think out of the box. You got to do things differently. You got to you know. So that's the kind of stuff, and therefore, and if you get it right, it is effective, and thereafter efficiency doesn't matter. And then and, and you know as we were talking about uh, and seeing some in the last session only, someone was saying about how much if you are very effective at how much uh, less you need to spend and so on and so forth. Even at Pirilite, if you look at it, we don't spend quite a lot, as you know we, but. But are our brands uh, very well known? The answer is absolutely yes. I'm saying it's part of the cultural ethos. Are they contemporary quite a lot? I think the answer is yes again. It's, you know, so therefore, and you know, you will catch a Ronaldo when basically that Coke controversy happened and a Fevi Fevicol comes in and there is Fevicol therefore everywhere. <laughs> and then you will catch a Fevicol or Fevicol for an Ambani wedding as you are aware. Yeah. <laughs> I think the point is, so the question is that there is, so therefore that's what, so the point is that there is, you, if you have, if you make high quality ads, if you make, if your communication is effective, then efficiency is, is, is not a conversation at all in my opinion. But what happens is that the conversations veer around a lot around efficiency, but I think the focus has to be on effectiveness personally. Yeah, that's why, you know, you see, uh, like as they say, case studies are the bathroom selfies of marketing. Ah, so, you know, so if you see all the case studies, they all end. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I have this one liners once in a while. So, uh, but they all end with how much of earned media. That's why I love the five star case. It said earned media, LOL. You know, so that's that's what that's what it is. 